The Women's College World Series came to its glorious end with a familiar ending, OU winning the national championship. So where does Patty Gasso rank? Not only among college softball coaches, but also among all college coaches, regardless of sport. And what about Caitlin Clark not making the Olympic team? And Danny Hurley saying no to the Lakers. We've got a lot to talk about with our good friend and Tulsa World columnist Barry Trammell, now on The Jenny Carlson Show. But before we get to that, I want to encourage you to subscribe first to my YouTube channel at Jenny Dash Carlson. Just hit that subscribe button. It's easy. It's free, but it helps me out a bunch. And then I hope you'll subscribe to my Substack. You can subscribe for free or if you want to support my work with a paid subscription, those start at $8 a month. I hope you consider subscribing no matter what level. All right, Barry, how we doing? Everything good? It's great. Good to see you, Jacko. Uh, coming down from a softball high. Sitting around the house last night, and I was thinking, wait, I don't have to be anywhere. I don't, uh, you know, the first night I sort of had uh, at home in a long time. So, um, in in some ways, it's a uh, sort of an emotional letdown when the Women's World Series is over because that ends the basically the calendar year for us, right? I mean, yeah. you know, the Sooners or Cowboys are always capable of making it to Omaha, but don't do it very often. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it was it was a thrilling time up at Devon Park. Yeah, we had uh, what eight straight days of, of games because that built-in off day became a play day after weather messed with the uh, if necessary day, and Florida forced OU into that if necessary game. So games every day right up until the end. That was uh, that was pretty cool. I you know what? I still am not. I still have to look at my calendar with the new format, but. Barry, the new format's great. I'm so glad that they changed it, built in some extra time, because this year we had, I think, four weather delays of of fairly significant uh, delays. The tournament could have been a total mess if we'd have been under the old system. Yeah, you don't, you know, would we we get Thursday and Saturday, definitely four day or four game days in the old format. Sunday could be. and trying to get four games in. We only try that once now. That's opening day, which is sort of a celebratory type atmosphere. But the uh, only downside I see is the new format sends two teams home on day two. Yeah. That's sort of a bummer. This year it was uh, Duke, and, uh, yeah, Duke and OSU, I guess. Yeah. And uh, it's always a bummer. You want to keep people around as long as possible. But it is, it is better to spread it out because it makes for fewer late nights, you know, playing at midnight and if you do get a delay, it's much more manageable. Yeah, they, they sort of have some wiggle room there. And, you know, late nights, we, that was actually on that day that the if necessary game got pushed back as, it, as the weather was delaying and delaying and delaying. I think that was sort of my thought. How late could that, if necessary, second in, in the second set of games go? Could have been a late start. Didn't end up that way. They moved those games before the day even started. But uh, yeah, lots of lo- lots to like about that. Lots of great softball you and I saw. Lots of great softball fans out there saw. But at the end, Barry, it was the same outcome that we've seen each of the last three years. Six of the last eight times this tournament's been staged. That's Oklahoma winning the national championship. So people want to talk about the, the seniors. People want to talk about the four Pete, which is unprecedented, obviously. I want to talk about Patty Gasso. I want to talk about her place among her peers. Let's start with OU. I think, I mean, there's some great coaches in OU history when you start talking about Bud Wilkinson and Billy Tubbs and Sherry Cole and just the things that they've accomplished. But is Patty Gasso, I mean, She's got to be on the Mount Rushmore in my mind, but is she at the top of the list among OU coaches all time? Yeah, I think she's number one. Um, I thought that before this season. I may have thought it before last season. I can't remember. Uh, but uh, she's one at the highest level. I mean, she, is it uh, seven or eight? What do we have? Eight now. Eight, eight national titles for Patty. Um, and it's in a sport that at one time was fairly – closed off to most of the constituents and if you crack the code and got in on the holy of holies well then it's great because only three or four teams could win it um but that's not the case anymore the sec with the way they've developed softball programs the big 12 with the way they've developed uh programs the acc uh virtually all the places that have a little bit of warm weather uh along with the pack schools 
uh, can produce big time softball. And it's really, you come to the World Series and in the old days, you'd see two or three teams that could win it. Now you see six or seven that could win it. So um, very tough to win national titles, tougher than ever. The, uh, the regional, super regional format is tougher to navigate through. And for Patty to have eight national titles, seven in the last whatever we said there, the last 13 years, is, you know, phenomenal. So I think she's the best. Uh, football, you know, if you, if, you, if you win national titles at Oklahoma football, you know, you're a great coach, no doubt about it. But football is also a little closed off, and um, not everybody has equal chance. And I think uh, whoever you want to pick, as the greatest OU football coach, some would say Wilkinson, some would say Switzer. You can make a case for Stoops. There's sure. there's three great candidates. I put Gasso ahead of them. Just uh, the way she's produced, um, I think she's number one. Two things you said that may, I, I'm I'm with you. I think she's at the top, and here's why. One thing you just alluded to is how how much more parity and how much more difficult it is to win in this sport. Um, you know, when we got to the, uh, the, the, the day of the tournament reveal and you see those top 16 seeds, you know, and you see the teams that aren't seeded, I thought there were probably 18 ish teams that legitimately had a chance to get to Oklahoma city. And so you start looking at the competition that's out there. And yet all that Oklahoma has continued to do is win championships in this era of increased parity. To me, that speaks to the excellence in the more recent days. But then I think you go back and you say, Oklahoma helped change this sport. You might even say that they were the catalyst for changing this sport. Because like you said, Barry, before Oklahoma rode in and won that championship in 2000, you know, you occasionally had somebody spoil the Arizona UCLA party, but it was pretty rare. Oklahoma does it. And suddenly, it starts to look like, hey, wait a second, a team that's not on the West Coast, a team that's not, you know, it, it, on that on the West side of the Rocky Mountains can actually win this thing. You know, now programs all over the SEC have built these great, you know, facilities. They built up their programs. I think she helped change the sport, which then if we want to take this out to look at college softball coaches, I think you put her at the top there as well. Now, she hasn't reached the win milestones. She's not ahead of the entire pack. I think uh, Carol Hutchins, the uh, now retired uh, Michigan coach, a great coach. I mean, again, winning in Michigan, I mean, it's not easy to win softball in Michigan. I think she tops the Division I wins record, but I don't know if you can put anybody above Patty Gasso. Not Mike Candrea, not all the great UCLA coaches. You saw a lot of those coaches before I did. What's your take on her, her spot in, among college softball coaches? Well, when you, when you look at the UCLA dynasty, uh, or maybe it's not a dynasty, long, long run of six, success, uh, it was split between two coaches uh, in the, in the 20th, 20th century. Uh, now Kelly Inouye Perez has you know, become the third member of that club. But um, So you probably wouldn't pick uh, Bacchus or... Uh, Oh, who was the uh, Sue Inquist? So Inquist, yep. probably wouldn't probably wouldn't go with either one of those. Kendrea would be the guy. Um, he'd be the chief competitor. Um, he had uh, eight titles as well at Arizona. So it's either it's either Kendrea or Patty, and they each built their program not from scratch but virtually. Um, I would I'd have to study the numbers, study the the situation. Uh, but I think Patty Gasso has has reached the point where she's with Mike Candrea. One of the two, the, one of those are the best ever. They rank one, two, two, one. And if you'd asked me in you know 1999, hey, OU softball coach Patty Gasso was the OU softball coach in '99. Patty Gasso one day is going to be as an accomplished and as hailed of a coach as Mike Candrea. I would have laughed. It'd be like it'd be like saying you know. Uh, uh, you know, Porter Moser is going to be John Wooden someday, or right. you know, Jenny Branchek is going to be Gino Ariema, or Brent Venables is going to be Nick Saban. We'd say, what are you talking about? That's not possible. It's more Didn't a reflection think- on those greats. You just don't think anybody's right. ever going to get to right. them. But you know what? Patty's done it. She has done it. It's amazing. It's crazy. Uh, eight national titles. What an incredible, incredible. Well, look at it this way, Jacko. 
we've had uh, 24 uh, World Series in this century, in the 2000s. Yep. Um, OU's won a third of them. It's amazing. That's crazy. That's just nuts in this parody-driven uh, sport. So uh, when when it's exploded and everybody can play softball. So, um, the, you know, and another point about parody. In the old days, when OU won or had a good year or Florida State or whoever, they did it with California girls. Now yeah. players, the, the great players are from everywhere. Yeah. And it's not just California, Arizona. It's it's all over. So everybody can be good at softball. A whole lot of teams are. But only one program is dominating, and that's Gasso Sooners. And let's remember this, too, about Patty Gasso. She doesn't – she's not retiring yet. Uh, she talked to me after uh, after that championship was won, and, and she joked about it. And so then I had to ask about it. Are you really retiring? No, no, no. I'm not – I'm not done yet. And uh, she had given that indication actually before the season, uh, saying at a, a rotary event here in Oklahoma City that she wanted to coach in the SEC. So obviously my thought was is that she was planning at least another year uh, of coaching. But who knows? I mean, she's in great health. Uh, you know, a good chunk of her grandkids live in Norman. You know, her son JT has got four kids and they're all in Norman. Uh, her son DJ is not in Norman, but he's now close by. He's got one grandchild. So she's got a lot of what you would, you know, want around you right around her. So I, you know, is it, is she going to coach another 10 years? No, I don't think so. Could she coach another five? I wouldn't be surprised by that, but she's not done. So she's adding to that resume, all that to say, uh, you know, those win totals and all those things that are, that she has not reached just yet. She might actually get to. Okay, lastly, about Patty Gasso. Let's talk about all coaches in college sports. Let's talk about right now. Let's not, we don't, I, I don't want to get in the way back machine and, you know, compare to, to uh, John Wooden or anybody like that, but of current college coaches, all sports, who's she in the conversation with and is she at the top of that group too? Well, with current, you've uh, eliminated Nick Saban. Right. So, um, you know, I, I, I'd be hard pressed to make the the case for Patty over Nick Saban. So I don't have to. That's good. Uh, there's a couple people that come to mind. Kale Sanderson, yes, has an unbelievable dynasty at Penn State. He's got some advantages at, at Penn State wrestling. Of course, Patty has some advantages at o, OU softball with the World True. Series being played just up the road. So. Uh, Kale Sanderson comes immediately to mind. Gino Ariema mentioned him a few minutes ago at Connecticut has done something fairly similar to what Patty's done in terms of just taking a place that really didn't have all that much going on in that yeah. sport and turned it into something crazy and successful and, and endure, enduring, you know, decade after decade. So those are the two that come immediately to mind. Um, I would have to, uh, I would acquiesce to somebody on, on some of the minor sports or Olympic sports. Um, Cause you, know, you think about, think about all the Olympic sports. We don't know anything about yeah, lacrosse, exactly. water right. polo. I mean, there's a ton in NCAA vernacular that I don't know anything about, but As you know, you I pointed think out skydiving air force won the skydiving. You said they better win the skydiving. <laughs> if it's air force. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if Air Force doesn't win the skydiving we're competition, all in trouble. Yeah, we're what, all in what's trouble. going on here? <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of those we don't know anything about, but I would probably put Patty behind Gino Ariema just out of the sheer volume. He's he's won, I think, three more championships than she has. It's entirely possible she could catch him. I think that is <laughs> – it's crazy to think because they are going to have to rebuild their team going into 2025. It's going to be a whole new-looking – uh, sooner roster. They're going to return very few. So that level of excellence that has been expected over the last few years may not be there to start the year. Now we have no idea what's going to happen with the transfer portal. We don't know. I mean, Kelly Maxwell didn't go into the transfer portal until much later in the summer a year ago. And look how important she was. So who is in the portal? Who Oklahoma pulls out of the portal? We don't know yet. But as far as being a team that people will say going into next year, they are for sure contenders. It will take some really big portal magic for that to happen. But all that to say, when you talk about what is possible in the next five years, I mean, I think another couple of championships is out there 
potentially for Patty Gasso. So uh, I I will put her behind Gino right now, but I don't I don't know if that'll be the case when she retires. We'll have to see. Uh, okay, let's switch gears. Let's talk about Caitlin Clark Barry. She did not make the Olympic team. This comes a week after she gets knocked down during a game. All the brouhaha from that, but. On the Olympic team especially, there's been a lot of talk about, well, you know, people aren't going to watch now. This is, you know, she belongs on the team, if nothing else, for marketing. So is there an out, is this, is this an outrage that she was not picked for this Olympic team? I don't think so. I assume, I'm no expert, I assume Caitlin Clark is not one of the 10 best American female basketball players at this point in time. I assume she's not. Um, and she's great. And she's great. But we go by, you know, most NBA rookies, no matter if they're rookie of the year, no matter if they're great, no matter if they're Victor Wimbanyama, is not one of the 10 best players in the league. So I assume it's the same on the WNBA. You're talking about older athletes, really good 24, 26, 27 year olds that can really play. Uh, so I don't, you know, I would assume we've got 10 to 12 at least. Uh, American females that can that are better basketball players than Caitlin Clark right now. So I don't think it's an outrage. I don't know that Olympic selections ever are made for marketing purposes. Maybe they are, but I'm not really aware of it. The Olympics sort of market themselves. And um, I, so I, I don't think it's an outrage. I think it's just, uh, it fits the narrative of Caitlin Clark is sort of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the heroine against all these anti-heroes, whether it's Angel Reese or any of the bullies in the WNBA that are beating her up here in this rookie season. It fits into that narrative, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's justified in reality. I think Caitlin Clark, I think, is headed for future Olympics. Yeah. Uh, maybe two, maybe when she's 26 and 30. Wouldn't surprise me at all. No. But right now, She's probably not uh, deserving of a spot on the team. Yeah, I think you look at the you look at the roster, and you know you see Diana Taurasi on there, who's been great for a very long time, and is still great, and is a leader, and you know all the things that she brings. And then you start down the list of the guards, and you know it's a it's it's star studded. Now may not be names that people are aware of, like they're aware of Caitlin Clark's name, but uh, my good friend Michael Vopel, who I'm actually having on my show to talk about Caitlin Clark, has made the point that USA Basketball, you, you just said this, Barry, it, Olympic selection is not about marketing. USA Basketball, as Michael has said, is not, they're not about that. They're about going and winning. And since 1996, when they had that first uh, women's basketball dream team, that's all that the Americans have done in women's basketball in the Olympics. So I think the game is improving around the, around the globe. So to not send your best players. And by the way, if Caitlin Clark is picked just for marketing, I mean, yeah, she's fantastic uh, and she's going to continue to get better. But if she's picked just to get eyeballs and then she doesn't play very much, isn't that just going to le- mean people are sitting there watching her on TV s- sit on the bench i mean it seems like it puts tv in a really weird situation do you market somebody who is maybe getting six minutes a game i mean it i feel like if you're if you're trying to go win olympic gold medals you pick your best team and if she wasn't part of the best team you you just you you have to leave her off the team I, i know some people are frustrated by that but to me if you include her for marketing it might actually backfire in the end yeah now i will say this uh, if you do leave her off the team, I'd recommend going ahead and winning the gold medal because no, uh, no, if you don't, that's the uh, sum of all fears. You've alienated the uh, Caitlin Clark uh, brigade, and also you didn't win gold. So, um, if you if you're going to take this uh, stand, which you know I think is completely proper, uh, you, you you need to go ahead and be successful. All right. Lastly, before we get out of here, let's stick with basketball. Let's stick with something that I know some people think is an outrage. Danny Hurley saying no to the Los Angeles Lakers, Barry. Is this an outrage? I thought it was an outrage that he even considered the job. Why would you take that job for crying out loud? Uh, That's a, that's a, uh, I assume the money is pretty good. Yeah, but that's a, 
that's a place where careers go to die. Um, you know, they, they fire coaches and they fire them quick. I made I made the list yesterday, but I don't have it with me. But Darvin Ham, two years, Western Conference Finals, last season, out now. Frank Vogel wins the 20 title, gone two years later after that. Um, just uh, a litany of going back to Phil Jackson. Since Phil Jackson, they just don't keep coaches. It's a high-pressure job. It's a difficult job. Coaching LeBron James is not easy. Really, there's been one guy that's really done it uh, successfully, and that's Eric Spolstra, I would say. So, um, you know, the Lakers are not a franchise with a great future. Their leader is 39 years old and will be 40 next season. Uh, the other standout is uh, the other superstar is uh, oft injured, Anthony Davis. Beyond that, they don't have a great roster. They don't have a bunch of assets. This is not a franchise on the incline it's a franchise on the decline sign up for there and uh you could be out on the street quick now danny hurley would be back you know coaching kentucky or you know kansas or wherever who knows in two years but he's got a good thing at uconn he's uh he's building quite the legacy i thought he would be madness you know you want you go, go coach uh victor Wimbanyama? hey maybe so go coach a the Boston Celtics, hey, they got a stacked roster that's in its prime. Yeah. Go coach the Thunder or one of these other teams with a bunch of young players that have a bright future. Sure. Coach the Lakers. So Jack Nicholson can uh, can criticize you and uh, Bill Plaschke can write bad things about you? I don't think so. I, I, I couldn't understand why he would ever consider in the first place other than the money. And it's my understanding that Connecticut, which I think – is pro rata the most wealthy, the wealthiest state in America? I think they're going to be able to pay him a pretty good chunk of change. Yeah, last I heard, he was he was not going to be destitute in the street of stores, Connecticut, uh, walking around with his hand. You ever up. been to stores? I have. I, I've I've covered a game at uh, at the uh, what is it? Um, Gamble Pavilion. Yeah, Gamble. Thank you. Gamble yes. Pavilion. Yep. It's a, it's a very small town. It's very kind of rural. I literally, now I'm, I'm not making this up. Outside of like convenience store on, in campus corner or at the student union, I literally found no stores in stores. <laughs> stores has no stores. It's the dangest <laughs> thing. It's literally just a little village with a massive college campus around it. It's the darn yeah. thing. Yeah, the the thing I remember most is the dairy. Apparently, they've got really good ice cream there. Oh, well, there you go. I didn't get a chance to go. I was there on the weekend. I think they were closed on the weekend. It would not. the The best thing about uh, ice cream up north is you get it in the winter. Heck, it doesn't even melt on you. <laughs> it take all day to eat it if you want to. You're like drinking a big a big gulp. You can take your time. Take your time. Take, take it all day. Yeah. The thing. Uh, one more thing about Danny Hurley for me, anyway. I just didn't think he was a great fit no. for the NBA. No. He, the way he coaches, and I think he, I think his players really like him at Connecticut. I think he has a good connection, but he coaches them really hard. hard. I just don't know if that fits with, maybe it fits some NBA teams. I don't know if that fits with the Lakers, Barry. You can probably yell at Austin Reeves and get away with it. <laughs> maybe. I wouldn't yell at LeBron James. That doesn't seem like a good career path. I mean, I don't, you know, Anthony Davis seems pretty sensitive too, but he might let it go. LeBron's not letting it go. LeBron will yell back and then it'll be all the rage for the next four weeks or four years. And I, I just don't think you can be yourself coaching the Los Angeles Lakers unless you're really passive. Darvin Ham, old Texas Tech wingman, loving him to death. Good, solid, low key individual. But. That's not Danny Hurley. We've seen him, you know, the ruffled tie and the, you know, the, the going frenetic in the middle of a game. You, you can't do that in the NBA. I thought it was a bad fit. I thought it was a bad, bad fit. Well, we will never get to see if it was indeed a bad fit because Danny Hurley said no to the Los Angeles Lakers. You wrote about that for the Tulsa World. People can find it at TulsaWorld.com. What else have you had cooking? What's on the, what's on the docket next? What can people find there? Uh, next couple of days, uh, right about the 11 a.m. kickoffs at OU football. We've only got one this coming season. Uh, everybody party. And number two, a, a death. I won't spoil the, uh, I won't spoil it for you, but there was a notable death in college football. 
Hmm. And the guy had a profound effect on Sooner history. All right. A little teaser. And again, TulsaWorld.com is where you can find all of Barry's stuff. Go there, subscribe, check out all his content. That's all the time we've got for now, though, to talk with Barry, talk sports. But please subscribe to him. Subscribe to me, my YouTube channel, and my Substack. It's easy. It's free on my end. But if you want to support my work financially, I'd appreciate that too. You can do that via my Substack, jennycarlson.substack.com. Quick word of thanks to our video dream team, Jacqueline Musgrove and Michael Lane. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.